Welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demonstration I'm calling capacitance of a parallel plate capacitors. This is an actual experiment that we perform in our uh, labs. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, experimenting with a parallel plate like this, two metal plates. In, in essence, that's what the nature of a capacitor is, is that it's two uh, metal plates right, that are conducting, but you want to separate them from each other with a certain gap. So this, uh, this is called a parallel plate capacitor. Positive, 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 positive. And then you connect it to a battery. And then you have another plate with a negative charge. You connect it to the negative of the battery. And then you, by storing charge on those plates, the, the plates create an electric field like this. Right? They create an electric field and you store energy in those electrical field lines. And as your capacitor is behaving like a, a, a temporary battery for you, an energy storage device, right? And then in the physics we learned that the capacitance of a capacitor is equal to the area of each plate, the area of the plate, right? So the, we're assuming that the, both the plates have the same area, so I'm going to be calculating the area of my plate. Then we multiply that by the electrical primitivity of the space in between, which is just vacuum or air. We assume that it's about the same, the electrical permittivity of air. And then you divide it by the distance between uh, the two plates. So the bigger the area of the each plate, it can store more charge. So that means its capacitance is bigger than its better capacitors. The smaller the distance between the plates, it's also a good capacitor. Electrical field times the distance, right? So the smaller the distance, the potential difference between the two plates is small. So here's what's happening. If the distance between the two plates is small, that means for a small potential difference, you can still create uh, the same amount of charge, right? You can have a lot of charge stored here and you don't need a big battery, right? So the battery is the one that's causing the voltage difference between the two. And if the D is small, the V is small, and therefore you don't need a very strong battery in order to cause the same amount of charge to be stored there. So the smaller the D, the bigger the capacitance, the bigger the area, the more charge you can store, and therefore the bigger the capacitance also. So we're gonna be proving this equation. Then what we learn in physics is if I put a dielectric material in there, right? The dielectric material is uh, semi-insulating material that will not uh, uh, allow the charge to flow from uh, the one charge to the other. So I'm going to be putting uh, several different dielectric materials. So the dielectric constant is kappa. The capacitance of the capacitor is also going to go up. So C is equal to kappa A E0 over D. And therefore we can, depending on what the dielectric constant of that material is, the capacitance will go up by that factor. So let's measure now the diameter of 17.8 centimeters, right? So 17.8 centimeters diameter, 17.8 centimeters. And uh, that's going to be 0.178 meters, right? And then, uh, I'm going to be, I can be using different kind of separators. One of the kind of separators I have is like this white um, material. So I can use three of these to separate the plates from each other. And that's all I need to do is measure the thickness of one of these. Okay. That will give me the approximate distance that the air gap will have. Right. 2.28 centimeters. 0.28 centimeters. That's going to be my little D value, 0.28 centimeters, which is going to be 0 0.0028 meters. Okay, so that's going to be my distance of the air gap. So now let's put three of these in about 180 degrees from each other, like this. And let's have the plates uh, touching each other, like that, uh, sitting on, on, uh, on there. And then you see there is a little air gap that develops here. I can show you. Right? Because you don't want the two plates touching each other, otherwise the, the electrons will just transfer from one to the other and they will discharge, right? And it will not be able to store charge for you. Fastness meter has a different scale, a 20 millifarad scale, 2000 uh, microfarads, 200 microfarads. Now the capacitance of my parallel plate is going to be of the order of picofarads. It's going to be very small. So I'm going to have to go all the way all the way to 200 picofarads, 
can see now it's showing negative 13.2 picofarads. So I want to zero that out. Uh, so then all I do is just turn this dial. Right now it's negative 23 picofarads. Turn it the other way. So turn it to where you want it to show zero. As close to zero as possible so that it's zeroed out. Okay, so right now it's about, it's very, very close to zero. Okay, so now I've zeroed out the capacitance scale. So the capacitor is gonna act like my battery when I connect it to the capacitor, uh, it's for the voltage. So since there's a particular uh, battery in there with a certain voltage, it already knows the voltage and then it measures the charge of the capacitor and that same charge goes through the, the, the meter itself. So it can read that charge, right? This is the meter now. And then by dividing the two, it spits out the capacitance of that capacitor. So let's connect it here. Okay. Then we connect the other side to the other one. It doesn't really matter the positive or the negative which it goes to. Then you connect that to the bottom right here. Okay, then it's, it is showing now 81.8 picofarads. 81.8 picofarads. So let's record that. C, we can call that C experimental, 81.8 picofarads. Then I can do my calculation. The area of the plates is pi times its radius squared, right? So the radius is half of this. So 0.178 divided by two squared, half of the diameter, right? That's gonna be the area. Then the electrical permittivity of space, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Then you divide that by the distance, 0 0.0028. Now let's calculate all of that and let's see what the calculator will give us. Pico periods. The pico means 10 to the minus 12. 10 to the minus 12. And this number is already 10 to the minus 12, so it's already a pico. So when you're calculating this, you don't really need to multiply by 10 to the minus 12 since the 10 to the minus 12 is already the pico. So I'm actually really close. My percent error is going to be 100% times 81.8 minus 78.7 divided by 81.8. So I'm subtracting my result from the theory, from the actual result, dividing it by the, the re actual result, which is my measurement. So I'm testing my theory against my measurement. Okay, now I can use a different gap. We have one here that is uh, thinner. Okay, so you can see here, this one's plastic uh, separators this one is a lot thinner, so if I use three of these, the plates are gonna be closer to each other, so I'm gonna be measuring the thickness of that. So I go back two spaces and I get three zeros. So that my calculation is gonna show me here 0 0.0009. What should happen to the capacitance? It should go up, right? The plates, since the plate separation is closer together. So my calculation, all I have to do is just change it uh, instead of 0 0.0028. So I could just multiply it by 0 0.0028 and then divide it by 0 0.0009. 244.7, that's the theoretical capacitance. Now let's actually put those plate separators here, three of them. One over here, one over here, one over here. And now the scale says I'm past the 200 scale. So I gotta go to 2000. That means it's already past 200 picofarads. So I go to the 2000 scale, it says 226 picofarads, 226, okay? 226 picofarads. Now it might be a good idea when you do this to re-zero the instrument every time, which I didn't do, right? Disconnect it, re-zero it, so you might get a more, uh, more accurate results. So without uh, re-zeroing it, I am getting a pretty good result. It is over 200, so I have to go to the larger scale, 
and then it is uh, considerably larger than when the distance was bigger. So this shows you that when the distance is smaller, the capacitance goes up, definitely proves that, okay? So um, now let's put a material in there, a dielectric. I have this material. It's a sh basically a, a plastic sheet. We call it polystyrene sheet. So if I'm gonna remove this, right? I'm gonna first determine the distance, uh, the, the distance of that. Okay, so thickness, it's also going to be very thin, just like the plastic separators that I used. Point, this is going to be very similar. Basically, it's a point zero zero nine uh, meters again, but now it's going to fill the air gap with the whole, instead of being air, the gap is the dielectric constant of the dielectric, right? So this one sits on this. Okay, so I can... Uh, I know from theory section, when I teach about this, that the dielectric constant of this is about 2.56, according to the data tables, right? So 2.56. So since um, all I did, the distance thickness D is the same as when I used the plastic separators, so the theoretical capacitance should be 244.7, right? But it should multiply by whatever the dielectric constant is, because I'm not changing anything else. I'm just changing just the kappa, right? So then the theoretical capacitance should be what? C theoretical. So it's just gonna be 244.7 times the 2.56 connected to the instrument, okay? I'm getting 440. So um, you can see here, this one did not work as well. There could be a couple of reasons that is causing error here. So you can see either the plastic sheet has been deformed and damaged through overuse through the years, and its dielectric constant is no longer 2.56, it's probably smaller, so it's causing it to be 441. So now what if I use these piece of wood, right? So they could be used as a dielectric, in industry, we use different kinds of materials for dielectric, and then we make a, um, uh, a capacitor by having two plates, put, putting the different layers of the plates together and putting dielectric constant, and then rolling it up and cutting them into pieces like that, and then selling them uh, uh, in bulk, okay? So we can use different kind of dielectric materials in the industry. So now I'm gonna put the piece of wood here could be used as a dielectric because the wood is an insulator. And uh, when, we, when I look up the dielectric constant of wood, this one that we have is pine wood. The dielectric constant is about 1.4, okay? So the result that I'm getting here is 409, 409. And now I have to measure the thickness of the wood also. So then I can do my calculation. The thickness of the wood is going to be 0.23 centimeters. 0.23 centimeters. 0.23 centimeters, which is going to be 0 0.0023 meters. So then I'm going to put it again in uh, all that equation. So I'll do the C. Pi times the diameter over two squared, right, times the 8.85, and then you can just add a pico in there, and then divide it by 0 0.0023, and then multiply it by the dielectric constant of 1.40, and then let's see what we get. So you can see it's a lot smaller than my experimental result, which is 409. Then you look up the dielectric constant of wood and you say, well, nothing is straightforward a lot of times. It depends on the moisture of the wood, the type of the wood. When I look up a particular table, it tells me that dry wood can, be, can have a dielectric constant of 1.4 to as large as 2.9. 2.9, and that's dry. So the air in here is a little bit moist, so that could change the dielectric constant as well. So if we try 2.9 and put it in here, that's gonna give us an answer a little bit closer to what we want. So it's within reasonable result of our um, experimental answer. So you can see 
that uh, with this experiment, with this demonstration, we have shown several things that uh, the, the smaller the distance, the bigger the, the bigger the capacitance. And then when I put a dielectric in there, the capacitance goes up by a certain factor based on the dielectric constant of that material, okay? And then due to various reasons, depending on the material, maybe it has been overused or maybe it is moist, you can get uh, error based on the dielectric, the actual dielectric constant of that material, okay? Thank you very much.